Hi again. Um, so in this video, we introduce the uh, MZ criterion for uh, two-dimensional flows. Now, the MZ criterion is um, probably the oldest method uh, among all of the the methods which are which which are included in this in in this folder, um, because it was developed back in in two thousand. The interesting thing about the MZ criterion is that it tries to relate Eulerian, so it tries to highlight Lagrangian free features using um, Eulerian Eulerian tensors, basically, because it, it, it strongly relies on the rate of strain tensor as well as uh, the strain acceleration tensor. Um, so that's um, pretty unique and, and also pretty interesting, I would say. So the MZ criterion folder um, is fairly simply structured. Now, the, um, the main notebook is inside this main folder, and it's called MZ criterion turbulence. So um, we applied the MZ criterion this time to the turbulence data set, so the, to the two-dimensional turbulence data set. Now, as I already um, highlighted in the introduction of, uh, of this video series, the turbulence data set is too big to be stored um, on GitHub. That's why I stored it on, on a polybox. And, um, and then you need to manually paste it from the polybox to the local folder. Now, all of this is explained actually in um in the data folder turbulence so all of this is explained here and simply by clicking on this link uh, you you're then redirected to a folder which then which then contains all the turbulence data now once you download this folder so once you download the data and and paste it into the turbulence uh data folder then you've got turb uh, u, which simply contains the uh, velocity data, and turb v, which simply contains the uh, vorticity data. Now, we will generally be interested in the turb u, so in instruments velocity data. And uh, each MUD file stores the velocity uh, field uh, at, at one uh, specific snapshot. And I think there are in total, there are around uh, 200, yeah, 251 snapshots, basically. And the important thing is that you you put them all so that that the that you put the the snapshots all inside this true view folder. Um, once we've done that, of course, uh, so we we need to import the, the data to our to our notebook, and this is simply done in this first in this first cell, basically, where you need to define the directory where the data is located, and then you need to iterate for each file in this directory and extract. The, um, the velocity data. So the velocity, the X component velocity field or the U component is denoted as U1 and the V component, so the Y component is denoted as U2. And then of course you also have the mesh grid. Um, so that's that's the new stuff because it's the first thing that uses data set. However, it's the only it's the only thing that changes simply this, this first cell. Now to the MZ criterion. So once we import the data, then of course we need to define the domain, the parameters, and we need to interpolate the velocity field from the discrete um, graded data that we that we uh, downloaded. Now to the MZ criteria. Now, how is the um, what's the MZ criteria and how is it computed? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to compute the so-called strain acceleration tensor, which is given in the following form, uh, and it's actually uh, not. I mean, it's a well-known tensor in, in the continuum mechanics community, although it is not as frequently used as, for example, the cauchy green strain tensor. And this strain acceleration tensor, interestingly, is objective. So the individual terms here are not objective. So, for example, the temporal derivative of the rate of strain tensor along the trajectory is, is not an objective quantity. However, overall, this tensor is objective. And as you can see, it just exclusively relies on, um, on, on uh, Eulerian quantities. Okay. And um, the main message here is that the criterion uses a frame independent Eulerian partition of the physical phase space. So basically, we are partitioning the phase space into uh, into different parts, so namely into hyperbolic and elliptic regions, based on the sign definiteness of the strain acceleration tensor or directions of zero strain. So let's digest this a bit. So first of all, what are directions of zero strain? Well, directions of zero strain are exactly those directions where this inner product, so um, so where the C matrix here is uh, is zero. And uh, you can define a so-called zero strain set. Now, if you have 
if you have a local trajectory at this point here, then um, you can you can take a look at the linearized flow geometry around this trajectory. And you can compute for this for this specific point. So for this specific um, so for the trajectory at a specific point in time, you can compute the M matrix, so the strain acceleration tensor. And then you can also compute the so-called zero strain sets. So all these, these, um, so this this set and this set here, these are the zero strain sets. So basically it's sets of, of, uh, of zero strain. And then you basically distinguish between three types of three type of, of uh, local flow geometry. So one flow geometry is this one here, where the MZ is, um, is, uh, is positive definite. So what does this mean? I'm computing the, the uh, this M tensor, and then I'm restricting the M tensor just to the zero strain sets. And, I, and if the restricted strain acceleration tensor to this, to this, um, to this Z sets is positive definite, then the trajectory is um, so-called settle type. So it's basically in a hyperbolic region. Okay, so at this specific point in time, if the MZ um, tensor is positive definite, then it is in a, in a hyperbolic region. Keep in mind, and that's important, that we do not require the whole, the whole uh, so we do not require that the strain acceleration tensor is positive definite, but we require that the, the rate of strain, uh, sorry, not the rate of strain, sorry. we do not require that the strain acceleration tensor is positive definite, but we require that the strain acceleration tensor restricted to these, to these zero, zero strain sets is positive definite. If that's the case, that's the so-called hyperbolic flow region. Now, if it is um, positive semi-definite, then it is a so-called parabolic flow region. This is a pretty rare case. And if it is indefinite, then it is in a so-called elliptic flow region. The, the original idea was to partition um, turbulence or 2D turbulence in regions of, um, in, in hyperbolic flow regions and in elliptic flow regions. That was in the, the initial idea. You can see that the geometry here is, is reminds of a, of a saddle point, and the geometry here reminds of an, of an elliptic flow region. So basically of, of uh, rotating. Um, yeah, it's, it's very intuitive that this is a, a, an elliptic flow region also. So the crucial thing is now, once we've computed this M matrix here, we need to identify the zero strain sets. And for 2D, this, these, uh, these vectors, so C plus and C minus, um, are simply given by by this form, where um, you need to have, of course, so where S S two two and S I two simply indicate the elements of the rate of strain tensor, and this is simply the norm. Um, and yeah, actually, I could get. Oh, sorry. Actually, I could. I could get rid of of this this um, sub index notation. So this is simply the norm of the rate of strain tensor. And um, so this C plus direction is, for example, this specifies this zero strain set, and this C minus direction specifies, for example, this zero strain set. So that's why you have two. We have C plus and C minus. Then, so how how do we check now whether the these M made this M Z, so whether the the strain acceleration tensor restricted to the zero strain sets is positive definite? Well. There exists this. Uh, we do the following procedure. We compute first of all this phi, this phi quantity. So phi quantity um, is simply the instantaneous net flux through the appropriate component of a zero strain set. Of course, if it goes from uh, negative to positive, then the flux is positive, and the same thing happens here, right? Whereas if it goes from positive to negative, then the flux through this um, this this piece is of course negative, okay? And you can see that that for um, the in hyperbolic flow regions, the, the flux is always positive, whereas in elliptic flow regions, the flux is um, is one once it is positive, and once it is negative, okay? So we compute the flux through through both of these of these zero strain sets, and then we define phi naught as the minimum. Okay, so we we take we 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 have two fluxes basically, and phi naught is the minimum of the two fluxes, and it follows. It can easily be verified that phi naught is positive in hyperbolic regions, because of course, if the flux is always positive, no matter if it goes. So if the flux is always positive, 
through um, so if phi minus and if phi, phi plus are always positive, then overall phi naught always also needs to be positive. Whereas here, the minimum flux will of course be negative because you will have one component which is um, sorry, sorry, just one component here which is negative, right? And um, so if phi naught is positive, then it doesn't have a bolic flow region. It is in, if it is negative, it is in an elliptic flow region. And then we we uh, we compute the total time spent, uh, respectively, in elliptic and in hyperbolic flow regions. So the crucial part here of the algorithm is again. So the procedure is: we take the initial conditions, we vectorize them, put them to different batches, and run the parallel computation. Now this parallel computation is done inside in in this tau function. So this tau function respectively computes the time spent in hyperbolic, in parabolic, and in elliptic flow regions. And if we take a close look at this tau function, of course, we need to integrate trajectories. And then we need to compute this M matrix. Of course, in order to compute this M matrix, what we do is we iterate through all the initial conditions. Uh, sorry, we, 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 um, we iterate through, through all the time, because of course, you have a trajectory over some finite time intervals, so you need to iterate at all, um, at all points in time. And for each initial condition, you then compute the gradient of the velocity the rate of strain, the, um, the derivative of the rate of strain, which is, um, so yeah, so the rate of strain at, 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 the, at the time instant plus delta t, because you need to compute the derivative of, of the rate of strain. And then with that, you can then compute the m matrix, the, the, this m tensor, okay? So here you iterate for all initial conditions and you simply compute the m tensor. Where the first part is simply the derivative of the rate of strain tensor with respect to t, and this is simply the um, is simply the rate of strain tensor times the gradient velocity field, and this is simply the gradient of the velocity field transpose times the rate of strain tensor. So this matrix here is essentially in a two times two matrix, um, and then um, what you do is actually you don't you don't need to compute the uh, eigenvalue. So this you can actually get rid of this. What you need to do is you need to compute the norm of the of this uh, S matrix. Why? Because we need to we need to compute the uh, these vectors c minus and c plus. In order to compute the vectors c minus and c plus, we actually need the norm of this um, of the rate of strain tensor. And then we can simply compute phi minus and phi plus um, using the formula uh, highlighted above. So using using this this formula here. You take the minimum between phi minus and phi plus and define this as phi naught. And if phi naught is positive, then you are in hyperbolic. If it is negative, or if um, the um, the rate of strain tensor is is um, it's has element has zero elements everywhere, then it's an elliptic flow region. And in all other cases, it is an parabolic flow region. And you do this for each initial condition. Okay. So you do this uh, for each for each trajectory uh, at every point in time, okay? And then you simply compute how much time it's spent in hyperbolic and in elliptic flow region. Um, if you do this and plot this with respect to the initial conditions, you get the following uh, fields, where of course um, this is the field for the for the time spent in hyperbolic flow region. So um, you can see here the strong hyperbolic domains, which um, which coincide with uh, ridges of the FTD field also. So this can be verified if you take a look at the at the um, FTD computation of the same data set. And then you can also see the um, time spent in elliptic regions, where, for example, here you have a pretty pretty uh, strong indication of a, of a vortex because the directories here spend uh, nearly all the time in, uh, in an elliptic flow region. With that, um, I would like to uh, to invite you to to um, to send me a mail in case you have questions, and I look forward uh, to the next video.